Hello everyone, I am back very quickly after the first video and the reason is is because a lot of you commented back in the first video and came back with your thoughts and I just wanted to come back and reply to some of those thoughts because I thought they were kind of cool regarding the family members and uh, let's just go ahead and jump right into some of these. Uh, Camp Facer coming in and talking about the, uh, the initiative and the encouragement of two family members uh, subduing the survivors to get Leatherface, a.k.a. Bubba, to come in for the final kill would uh, give the player, the, uh, the two players, Leatherface and the uh, family members, more experience points or something to that effect. You get an extra reward for... Uh, doubling up and cooperating and uh, setting it up to where the uh, family members and Bubba working together in unison getting Leatherface that final kill will encourage more points that gets the team working together rather than working separated and by themselves because there's no drive no initiative nothing to encourage uh, teamwork so with the point system set up that way you know teamwork will be a driving force him mentioning also that maybe you can just go ahead and kill a survivor with just a, a family member without Leatherface there, but uh, and then that effect you only get a certain amount of XP, not as much as if you had just slowed them down, subdued them enough to where then Bubba Leatherface can come in and get that kill. Seal Bob also adding in on that concept of getting higher points, ratings, etc. For if you work together with Leatherface to get that final kill, he added on to that it would be a good idea for maybe the uh, family members to drag the survivor somewhere to a certain point to be processed or something to that effect. Um, you know, like a capture the flag thing, getting the survivors in a certain place. Uh, and then the next whatever thing would happen. The only thing I'm concerned about with these ideas of uh, dragging a survivor someplace or uh, subduing them to where they can't go anywhere is you're taking the survivor's hands off the controller. Uh, if they do implement something like this, it would have to be a very quick thing to where the player that's playing the survivor role does, you know, they're not hands off the controller, but for an only, for only a short amount of time. Because if that goes on for too long, you know, you're you're essentially they're in a stun state. Uh, they can't do anything, and then that, you know, of course, will become very unfun for the players that are playing survivor because there's, you know, they have to be able to do something. They have to have a mini game or a struggle, a tapping the button to get away, or another team member coming in to help them escape. Uh, and now if that were easy, you know, if another team member running in to help them escape a, a family member, if that is an easy thing that it would only take 15, 20 seconds to do and is a central part of the gameplay that feels right, then yeah, you could implement that in. But you have to be very careful about taking survivor's hands off the controller because that's disruptive to the gameplay it, it can ruin the pacing some people just don't like to be in that kind of a state where they can't do anything um you know you have to give them options there needs to be options always open for the player to be able to play the game uh, you don't want to subdue them and take their hands off the controller for too long seal bob then followed up and said that maybe family members when they do grab a survivor in such a way that they are unable to do too much that it's kind of like putting uh, a survivor on a hook in DBD, except it would be more active, you know. Maybe there's a mini game for the survivor to get away. Uh, this, the, uh, the family member players could then be opened up with options, right? Do I, do I beat on them? Uh, if you think they're going to get away, maybe there's a game of rock, paper, scissors, something similar, but there's options. Maybe do, you know, the, the family member has opened up with options. Do I just go ahead and kill them? Do I, do I torture them and beat on them to keep them at bay and, and take the risk to wait on Leatherface to get there? So Leatherface can get the final kill in and you get more points. It's almost like a risk versus reward mini game happening while the family member has the survivor subdued will they get away 
they can get away in multiple ways, you know, possibly. These are really fun ideas. They can get away via another survivor coming to help them. They can get away if they win the mini game. Whatever mini game is happening while they are subdued. The family member also making choices on whether they want to beat on them to uh, keep them at bay even longer. Uh, maybe there's a risk reward uh you know in in doing that you know do you just hold them do you beat on them do you do you go ahead and kill them uh if you maybe when you beat on them that's how you do kill them there is a risk reward in that you know you can beat on them and you and you don't know but you might kill them by accident and then they're just dead and then you know you don't get those extra points for holding them for leatherface there's all kinds of little ideas and things right there the uh, good thing for the, the I'm sure the devs already have everything worked out but it's cool things to think about at least and, and all this is always fun to speculate uh, how is it going to work what is the back and forth going to be between the uh, between Leatherface and uh, the survivors and the other family members how do they work together Nathan Hell brought up a good idea, seemingly. It might be a little bit harder to do this one, but it's still kind of another good idea. Talking about the, uh, the survivors having to go after the family members to stun them just long enough or kill them. I don't know. Maybe you could kill them, or but you the ultimate goal would be to get the keys off of them or to get some kind of objective off the family members in order to escape so you have a little bit of whereas you know dbd is all about escaping vhs is all about attacking the monster well here you go uh the texas chainsaw massacre introducing a little bit of both now again these are just speculations but good ideas but you know a little bit of both you attack them but you can't kill them but you at least get to attack them enough to get an objective off of them keys whatever it is that you need to be able to go get a truck started so you can escape, etc. Uh, now, the only problem I can see with this is the family members hoarding these items in such a way to abuse the survivor players to keep them from getting the items, right? Them going off and hiding in a corner until Leatherface finds them. So, you know, there's no way, you know, if, if they're just sitting somewhere and keeping this crucial objective from the survivors, well, then that can abuse the round and the survivors are going to get mad because, hey, I can't get this item because dude's just hanging out in a corner of the map where it's really hard to get to him. Leatherface can get to us really easy here, you know, and it's just abusing mechanics. So that kind of thing pops up into my head. But you never know. There's things you can probably put in the game if that were a thing to help uh, ease that problem down. But, you know, it's a good idea to attack a family member to get the keys or whatever it is off of them to then move forward and, and to try to escape the map and then just to for me personally to put in my own little input about grandpa that i was thinking about after i had finished my last video was that uh you know what if you do encounter the modern hewitt grandpa if they end up being able to put him in the game and he stomps his cane and on the floor and then that would make it so Leatherface can then spawn really close by to the survivors wherever Grandpa is in accordance with the survivors Leatherface appears really close in an unseen hallway or door someplace where you can't see him the survivors will not see him spawn in but now he's like really close to them and you've got you got to prepare for a chase because you just ran into grandpa that means leatherface is going to be very close and you're about to be caught so grandpa essentially would bring leatherface right there to them and now the survivors are kind of in up shit's creek um the only downside of that is, you know, you're bringing Leatherface right to the survivors at a moment's notice on a whim. And how, e how easy is it for Leatherface to just go ahead and kill them in a chase? How hard are the chases? These are things we just don't know about. But that can always be, you know, the distance of how, where and how far he spawns away from them could always be adjusted. Maybe he doesn't spawn too close, so it's not as easy for him to just go ahead and deter determine where they are exactly, so they do have enough time to kind of just break line of sight or get away quietly. 
Uh, but then Grandpa, you know, Grandpa being in a wheelchair, he's not going to be fast enough to try to pursue them and find them. Uh, and chase them essentially as well as Leatherface would be. So you'd find Grandpa, he'd do the stompy stamp thing with his cane, and then, you know, the survivors are going to be out of there. Could be a really cool thing, too, that, uh, you know, Leatherface, when he has his chainsaw on, the sound of the chainsaw kind of masks the sound of the survivors, them running, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of easier to break line of sight from him and actually hide because when you are hiding and his chainsaw is on the gameplay mechanic will work in such a way that when his chainsaw is on he has a hard time detecting them the player will have a harder time detecting them and when the chainsaw is off things are more quieter and he can hear their footsteps and he can find them a little bit easier kind of makes the gameplay uh flip-flop in a way that you know maybe he will have to hit them with the hammer slow them down maybe that you know that's how, why he would have to slow them down essentially is because with the chainsaw on yeah you can kill them faster but they can slow down not run and be like kind of like in vhs you can be quieter and it's easier to break line of sight and uh, uh juke the killer in such a way with the hide and seek mechanics um, and so, you know, Leatherface would have his hammer and, and he could pop them once or twice to slow them down. So then he can get the chainsaw kill in, uh, getting the chainsaw kill in right off the bat when they're healthy is a little bit harder because every time you rev that chainsaw up, it's going to slow you down because it takes time to start. Uh, and you know, that's a whole cool mechanic in my head going on. And so going after them with the chainsaw right off the bat would be a little bit harder because now they can just be a lot more stealthier. So, you know, there's all kinds of cool things to think about. One thing I really can't wait, I forgot to mention this on the first video, one thing I can't wait to see in here is just Leatherface opening and slamming that, that silver door shut, you know, his main little back room there. Um, in the In the main movie, I think it's just the room where he hooks people up. And in the uh, in the newer Hewitt house, it's actually the door that then leads down to the basement. I really, really hope that uh, Gunn and Sumo get the rights to create that Hewitt house because that is a map that even while they were making Friday the 13th, we talked about it a lot in the cabin chats is just having that house, man, that Hewitt house and the outside forest and the little trailer house outside of that that housed the fat woman and the other weird lady that tried to befriend the protagonist, but were ultimately just kind of teasing her into a trap. Uh, all of that, the dirt road, dude, between the original house that they're going to put in the game coming up, since it's a prequel to the original movie, and then hopefully getting the rights to the Hewitt house, the bigger house, with the more detailed front area, uh, man... The, the maps will be really fun. Just as good as having a summer camp like in Friday the 13th. Like I can kind of see all these things in my head. Potential to be very creepy, very atmospheric. I can just kind of see uh, in video game form walking around a house with flickering lights and nasty dusty hallways. And maybe they'll have a filter over the camera. Um, I've always wondered about the view of the camera, too. I mean, they're probably not going to use this camera view in the game, but, the, you know, the infamous camera views that you see in the movie that are most of the time very low camera angles. Um, that would be kind of a cool thing to see in the game. Maybe you can just manipulate the camera down there. But uh, it would be cool to see, you know, the filters and the aesthetic and all that kind of stuff going on. And it makes you feel like you're playing in an old, grungy 70s horror movie. Very exciting things, you guys. And I, I, I want to I talk about all this stuff. It's, it's exciting. I just really hope they nail it. Thank you guys for the feedback. Always love to hear what you got to say. I feel like as this goes forward, it's just going to get more and more exciting. There's going to get there's going to be more and more to talk about. We will have to see as it comes out. Let me go ahead and finish it up here, you guys. Thank you for listening. We will be back for more 100%. Have a good one. Again, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.